Welcome back, friends. In the last episode, we deployed to production. We deployed to Heroku. In this episode, we're going to take a look at how to set up Devise to authenticate users and deal with, uh, yeah, deal with just users, user authentication, getting them logged in, confirmed, password resetting, etc. Um, so let's let's take a look. Uh, Devise is a gem for managing authentication. Uh, it's built for Rails and it supports a whole bunch of different modules. So you can you can authenticate with the database with usernames and passwords. You can authenticate with OmniAuth, which allows you to use OAuth to authenticate in different services. It has support for confirming, recovering, registering, remembering, <laughs> tracking, timing out, validating, um, and locking. So a whole bunch of different things that you can do with Devise. Now, generally, I actually tend to and prefer to, in most cases, roll my own authentication, but that is definitely not recommended because there's a lot of security things to think about when you're working with authentication. And so what we're gonna do is walk through the process of how you set up and get started with Devise today. The first thing we need to do is install this gem. So we're gonna open up the gem file and uh, at the very bottom, I'm just gonna drop in Devise. Now, one of the, th the um, tools that Devise has is the ability to send an, a confirmation email to the user so that when they are signing up, they can receive an email and click a confirmation link and then um, you can un, you can like be confident that that is the user's email. And so in order to do that, there's another gem that I wanna use in development called Letter Opener. And um, that is a gem that was created by Ryan Bates originally, like the old school, uh, Rails casts that you may have seen. Um, yeah, the, the author of that created this super helpful gem that's useful in development called Letter Opener. So I'm gonna drop that in there and say bundle install. And this will install both device and Letter Opener. And then the next thing I wanna do is generate device install. So we say Rails G device colon install. And this will install device and it does a couple different things. So we can take a look at what that's doing. So it's creating an initializer and it's configuring um, or setting up some basic locales. So you can actually do this with uh, different languages. So in, in the development environment, we need to set up our uh, config action mailer default URL options. In the last video, this was one of the things I was trying to find, um, development.rb, so that our URL for worked. Um, and so here we go, we're gonna drop it in here. Um, the other thing we need to do is when using letter opener, we need to specify that letter opener is the way that we want to deliver email in development. So I'm gonna copy these two arguments. So um, this says, when I'm, if you try to send an email in development, use letter opener. It's really cool. It opens in the browser as an HTML view of what the email would have been that's like sent to the customer. Okay, so those are the two steps we need to start with. What else does device tell us we need to do? We need a root route, we have one already, that's great. Then we wanna add these to our layouts, application, HTML, ERB. Layouts, application, HTML, ERB. I'm just gonna drop them at the top here. And uh, a couple a couple interesting things we can do in this view. So uh, device comes with some user, with some, with some helpers. Um, and so one of them is like if uh, X, um, is authenticated, I think, uh, where X is the, the type of model that you wanna use. Um, and we don't actually have any concept of a user model yet or of a user because I've just been kind of like hacking away as if I was the only user. So I think this is if user is authenticated, let's take a look. So, oh, signed in, user signed in. Uh, if user signed in. So if the user signed in, we'll show them these links. Otherwise, we'll show them a link that is purely to log in. So users sign in or something like that, I think. And we'll say sign in. Okay, I, this might be user, I can't remember. Sign in. Uh, okay, yeah, so resource slash sign in should work. Um, so yeah, back to getting started here. Uh, so we, we did this, we set up our URL options. Now we need to generate a device model. So we say Rails G device uh, user. In my case, I'm gonna call it user. In your case, it could be account, it could be team, it could be 
whatever the model is that's going to represent the, the type of actor that is authenticating to your system, that's what you want to name this thing. And so this is going to create a new model because I don't have a user model yet. And in the migration, we can take a look at what it's doing. So it's going to be database authenticatable. So we're going to have people log in with email and password. Um, and we can say like, okay, let's just enable some of these other things. So trackable, confirmable, lockable, sure. Like not, not a huge deal. Um, and then we'll, we'll enable these indexes also and call that good. Uh, so we can say rake db migrate, and that will run that migration to create the table in the database. And the table already exists because I went through this already. So uh, let's see. So rake, um, let's see, rails, rails db drop, db create, db migrate, db seed. Uh, okay, let's see. So I went through this whole process and recorded how to do this. And then I forgot that my, uh, for some reason it wasn't capturing the screen. It was just capturing my face the whole time. I was like, that's probably not that interesting. Let me reshoot that. Um, okay, so now that we have the users in the database, let's go edit the model, the user.rb model here. And so it like there's, there's this devise method that you can call at the top level that like, like specifies all the different components of device that you want to use. So uh, we're going to just use confirmable, lockable, um, trackable. We don't need omniauthable because we're actually using, we're actually not using omniauth, we're using something else in order to authenticate to YouTube. So this should be good for our user model. Um, okay. And then if we refresh our page and just take a look at what's going on now, Rails S, so restart the server. And uh, there's an error in our syntax. So what's going on? Application, HTML, ERB. If the user signed in, double question mark. We don't need double question mark. Okay, so if we try to go to like the root route, which is used to show all the videos and hit enter, we are dropped into the videos controller. But now we see a sign in link so that we can click sign in. And I think it's supposed to be users slash sign in. Okay, so let's go fix that. Users sign in. Okay, so refresh, click sign in, and we're just, we're here. We're, we're, log, we're, we're dropped into this login page. We could probably say like only show this if we're not on the login page, but whatever, it's fine. Now, if we click sign up, we'll enter an email address and just password, password, and click sign up. Now, this is so cool. Oh my gosh. So this is from, uh, this is from letter opener. This is what the email would look like when you're confirming your account. Uh, so this is exactly what, um, what they would receive from your Rails application, the email that they would receive. And we're, we're able to view this because of letter opener. Very cool. So if we click confirm my account, we're now confirmed and we can log in. So we can just say like, uh, let's see, password. And then we can log in. And now we're in, we're, we're successfully signed in. So that's super cool. Now I don't have any videos to show anymore because we just dropped the database and re-migrated it. So before we do this connect to YouTube bit, um, I want to set up the association between each video and um, the YouTube channel that we're pulling videos in from. But I wanna do that in a separate episode because what we have done so far is actually almost all that we need to do for authentication. So I wanna go back to the application control or application HTML ERB. And if you're signed in right now, we don't actually have a way for you to sign out. So I want to try um, link to, let's see, sign out. And now we need to figure out what we're actually passing as like the, the link that we're going to click on that will sign you out. And the method is actually going to be delete. So we want to send a delete request to some path. Now, when I was going through the docs here, I couldn't actually find quickly the way that you sign out. So there's like a sign out method um, and you can like rename it to log out or whatever. Like this configuring your routes allows you to configure it so that you can call it, some, you can call it log out or you can call it something different. But, um, but what I wanted to do was try to figure out like, how do I actually create a button or create a link or create a something 
that will allow you to take the action to sign out. And there isn't really clear instructions in the readme. So the way that it works is we have to first figure out what is the route that we want to send this request to. And so I, the, I took the hint that it has sign underscore out in here as a thing. And so then I can say rails routes pipe grep sign out. So rails routes is just gonna list all the different routes and some information about them. And so we can find this one result that says um, the name of the route here. It says it's, it accepts delete requests to slash user slash sign out. And so this is gonna call the device. It's inside of the d device namespace and it's gonna use the sessions controllers destroy action. So that's like what actually logs the user out. And so if I copy this destroy user session and go to application HTML ERB and then I'm using this link to, I think I can say like, destroy user session path. And I don't know if this method delete thing is gonna work. I think I saw this work for some JavaScript thing at some time. So let's let's see, let's see what this actually created. So if we inspect this, um, it has a link data dash method delete. I have a feeling that some Rails JavaScript magic might happen here, let's see. So if we click sign out, boom, signed out successfully. And all we see now is sign in. Um, but we're, we're able to still see the videos controller. And so I don't want anyone to be able to actually see the videos controller. I'm gonna go to videos controller. And now at the top, we can add a before action. Um, and this is, what's the name of it here? Before action, authenticate underscore and then the name of your, um, your thing, so user, bang. Now what this will do is, this kind of implements a method, something like this, authenticate user, which says like redirect uh, to the like login page, unless um, there is a current user. Like unless there's a current user that's logged in, redirect to the login page. Now, if there's a redirect action that happens inside of a before, or like a redirect method is called inside of a before action, that will execute and redirect before your controller action is run. So this allows you to sort of like prevent your controller actions from executing by using some filter, some before before filter. And this actually used to be called before underscore filter. Now it's called before action. Um, and I get those mixed up sometimes still. All right, so you need to sign in before continuing. So if I try to just go to like slash dropped into here or like slash videos, I'm dropped into here. Now, if I try to go to slash like uh, templates, or slash, um, what is it, presenters, I'm able to still get to this presenter view because we haven't protected that view. So we're gonna wanna add that to all of the different uh, controllers that we wanna protect. So I'm gonna drop this into description template. And so there's actually a different way you can do this also. So rather than needing to remember to add your before action to every single application or every single controller that you're implementing. Instead, if you just add it into your application controller, um, let's see, <laughs> before action, uh, what is it called? Uh, authenticate user. So this, because we're adding it to the application controller and all of our other controllers inherit from application controller, now we shouldn't be able to get into anything. So you need to sign in or sign up before before proceeding. Cool, now if we tried to go to like slash description templates, right, this is another route. Okay, cool, we're redirected. We have to be signed in to see like any of those pages. So if we were to sign in, then we're able to see description templates and we're able to see present uh, presenters and we're able to see the home page with, with videos, et cetera, et cetera. So this should work fine. Uh, you might get into a little bit of a sticky situation if you are, um, for instance, trying to run some code where the user isn't authenticated or something, but um, for the most part, that should allow you to prevent access for someone who's signed out. So if we go to the presenters page and we click sign out, now we can't like get back to the presenters page without signing in. So. Uh, pretty handy. And there's a whole bunch of other stuff that comes in here too. So like forgot your password, send me reset instructions. Um, again, using letter opener, 
Uh, it opens up the pass password reset. So we can say change my password, password two, password two, change my password. So that's cool. That works. <laughs> I think I said one. Pa or I said password and one password. Like, uh, did you mean me? Are you talking to me? No, I'm not talking to you. <laughs> uh, okay, so this is this is cool. I'm pretty happy with this. And in fact, like, I'm gonna deploy this so that like folks aren't messing around with that uh, app on production. So that is how you quickly spin up authentication with Rails using Devise. Thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed it, please give it a like and. I would absolutely appreciate a subscribe as it both of those actions help other people find this content. Uh, yeah, so I hope you're having a great day and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.